this is the first class in religion and society in India. We have included 11 compulsory courses, methodology of social sciences is the first and religion and society in India is the last compulsory course of our MA syllabus. This is primarily a theoretical and technical course. All the readings are compulsory. There will be around 30 to 33 classes in the course. The whole course is divided into two parts. One, the history of sociology of religion. Primarily different theories, conceptual formulations and methodological concerns as well as constants. All the readings mentioned in the course outline just below the sections are compulsory whereas there are some readings which are optional which are called suggested readings. Since this is a theoretical and technical course it may be slightly boring and those who wanted to join our MPhil and PhD course should pay a little more attention to this course because many questions in the entrance test will be directly or indirectly related to this. Some of you know me because I taught one optional course. But as a compulsory course teacher, I'm a different person. My optional course was absolutely not dependent on books and the reading materials. And I gave you maximum freedom to practice your sociological repertory. In this course, I'm sorry, I will be a little harsh and demanding and I request all of you to bring pen and paper because as a theory teacher, I do not like to answer questions during my lectures. And you cannot say that you will forget the question after two or three days. In case your memory is weak, I'm sorry, this is higher education, this is not school education. And you will have to follow certain rules. The rules are use your pen and paper every day, write your academic diary. You will encounter different technical terms in almost every sentence. And I am not going to answer all your questions either in the class or even outside unless and until I am convinced you have done your homework. Now, what I expect from you? I expect from you that the listed key terms in the course should be known to you. And what is the reliable method to know the concepts? Encyclopedia of Social Sciences. Therefore, I expect you to consult Encyclopedia of Social Sciences every week. 
otherwise there may be difficulty in understanding the theoretical debates now this the straight forward introduction is necessary because most people think that sociology is enlightened common sense it, it is not it is a technical science of course there are marginal figures for example max weber who is taught in sociological thinker course but to the best of my knowledge no sociologist anywhere in the world has been able to survive in the academia only on the basis of weber some people wrongly think that Talbot Parsons is a follower of Max Weber but please remember in his theoretical manifesto which appeared in the structure of social action he had commented on different theoretical genealogies on which he had built his system you should be in no illusion or delusion that mainstream sociology anywhere in the world is positivist in orientation by positivist i mean emile durkheim and karl marx marshall moss and levi strauss derrida and post structuralists others are there they may be very dear to you you may like or dislike them but the bread and butter of sociology is hard core technical enterprise now religion in this course is both a concept and a metaphor religion is a concept and some of you understand in different societies but in sociology there are only two concepts which are paradigmatic in the sense ts ku defines paradigm in the structure of scientific revolution one is the concept religion and the other is the concept of class religion and imagine you can used in the elementary forms of religious life and class the way karl marx used in the as capital or in english capital volume one i know it is easily said than the red most students and most teachers these days at least read commentary on das capital and the elementary forms in a semester system it is not necessary some people think that text books should be read from back to back but but i do believe as a practicing sociologist in a semester in case you are reading four courses you should read at least two books back to back at least three times in case you wanted to do justice with yourself and for other readings you should make tutorial groups because science is a community game this is again community game is a term used by ts kun 
Science is not something which can be objectively or empirically segregated from non-science. Science becomes meaningful only when the fellow scientists communicate in a common language. I am giving you an example. For example, take the concept of social class. This term was not used by Karl Marx. This is a term which is very popular among the so-called non-Marxist social scientists. Because for Karl Marx, class is primarily economic. And it is the product of means of productions and relations of productions. There is a dialectical relationship between relations of productions and means of productions. And there cannot be any ambiguity in Marxian terminology about the concept of class. But unfortunately, many American social scientists have used the concept of social class in a very non-technical terms just to justify their political propaganda. Therefore, please remember a particular person his name may be anybody, including Karl Marx, may write three different types of writings. And every writing is not equal to the other. For example, Das Kapital is one genre of writing. The Communist Manifesto is of another type. But then Karl Marx was also writing in newspapers. He was writing dispatches to different journals, magazines, and, you know, popular forums. The three cannot be equated in the same way. When Talcott Parsons is writing a technical commentary on the structure of social action, he is much more genuine as a social scientist. But when he is developing his own concept of social system, it is a grey area. The non parsonians have not been able to verify it in the ground. Therefore, Parsonian sociology becomes a cult, like a religious cult. Here, in this course at least, we are going to follow comparative method. What does it mean? It means the same thing which Imai Durkheim said again and again in the rules of sociological method. For example, take one concept, exploitation. Now exploitation is not used only by Karl Marx. Exploitation is also a term which is used by Max Weber in sociology of religion. He said that every belief system it exploited by the wasted interest groups to further its own class interest. But this exploitation is conceptual in nature. Whereas the Marxist concept of exploitation is rooted with existential reality on the ground. Therefore, please try to segregate conceptual terms with conceptual terms and empirical reality with empirical reality. In other words, never compare and contrast unequal things. Community should not be contrasted with society. Individual should not be contrasted with family. Family should not be contrasted with association. Association should not be contrasted with institution. In other words, so far, most of you have been eclectically using commonsensical English terms for sociological terms. Please try to differentiate one with the other. And therefore, I do expect 
that at least all of you must be using every day in your sociological writing, either a good standard sociological dictionary or beta encyclopedia of social sciences or there are certain good textbooks about key terms. For example, it, for this course, I, I will try to uh, highlight three conceptual repertory which is available to us. One is Robert Nisbet's sociological tradition. There is one chapter which all of you should begin with. The concept is sacred. How the concept sacred in Emile Lukheim's book has a long genealogy in the Western civilization. In the same way, Robert Nisbet's other concepts are also very interesting. They will empower you as a sociology student and possible sociology researchers. After giving five introductory lectures about contemporary and classical theories of religion, I will start dealing with different concepts. And once you start reading people like Robert Nisbet or SF Nadel Foundations of Social Anthropology or any good encyclopedia of social sciences, you will be in a better sense to play with concepts. For example, in case I ask you, you need not answer in the class, but you can write in your academic diary. What is common between Marx, Weber and Durkheim? They are very different people, but why they are taught together? I have asked this question in the last 30 years to many batches of students and fellow teachers. There are differences, this is natural, but unless and until there is critical minimum consensus, it cannot be called a science. We have every right to disagree, but the disagreement should be less than 49%. In case differences are more than 50%, somehow, somewhere, we are on the wrong path. Because then, I will not be able to communicate with you. You will not be able to communicate with me. You will not be able to communicate with anybody. This is our hard weapon. Concepts are our hard weapon. The use of concept is our soft power. As a sociologist, concepts are our hydrogen bomb, atom bomb. Before you know how to use them, you must have it. Now, after saying this, I must apologize. It should have been taught in the first semester on the first day. But India is a democracy, JNEV is also a democracy, and in democracy anything goes, some people think like this. But anyway, you please forgive me, I appeared as a compulsory course teacher very late <coughs> in your MA course, but I will try to compensate in the coming three months. The whole course uh, is divided like this. Uh, in the first five classes, including this one, I will introduce you to five major theorists of religion. 
and in the sixth class it will be open for discussion i expect that all of you will write your academic diary you will write what you have understood what you have not understood in what way this lecture questions your knowledge so far challenged your hypothesis or in what way it validates your hypothesis validation of your hypothesis is called verification or falsification verification of your hypothesis and falsification of the rival hypothesis now again apology uh, in methodology of social sciences as well as in sociological thinkers we start with marx weber durkheim in my way that is the universal way not because i am saying it because i am following it marx weber and durkheim are the middle of sociology they are not the beginning not the end you cannot understand durkheim on his own there is a long history in which durkheim marx and weber are rooted and what is that history that is the history of modernity but it is not a very linear history it is a very chaotic history and you must have experienced unlike your friends who did not pursue their higher education who left after 12th class or after graduation your life is much more difficult than your friends who discontinued their studies knowledge may empower you but it is not necessarily a very good thing the path of knowledge is the path of a martyr you must have experienced you are talking with your father mother best friend and you know that they are ethnocentric they are biased prejudiced but the moment you try to tell them there is another reality in the same context they are very angry now in case he or she is a stranger you can manage but how do you feel in the same family therefore all seekers of knowledge and truth have experienced trauma i am a great advocate of empirical method and i am giving you one reliable statistics take friends almost 89% of french social scientists have gone to asylum almost 45% social scientists have committed suicide take india 99% of jnu teachers suffer from psychosomatic diseases <laughs> please don't laugh it is very serious it is not that they are doing something wrong their only fault is that they are searching truth they are trying to create a beautiful world 
they want a just society. But the social situation is such alienating thing that it not only alienates you from your family members and friends, but also from yourself. My dear friends, try to understand why you are so demotivated to do hard work because there is no reward as per your hard work. Intellectuals are not respected the way they should. The JNU professors or the JNU vice chancellor or rector has less power than the police constable of Vasant Vihar Thana. The state doesn't listen to us, the market doesn't listen to us, the society doesn't listen to us. There is no material incentive to survive as a scientist. The other day I was talking to a person born and brought up in the United States of America. He asked why America declined. I said, it is not only you who have declined, we have also declined. Dur ka dhol bahut suhaavna hota hai. Americans or Europeans ko lagta hai, India is a very happy society. India is very idealistic. India is very spiritual, nothing like that. We are normal people like anybody. In similar situations, human beings almost behave similarly. The only difference is the difference of language. And verbal language is only one of the languages. There are many languages available with the living beings. And human beings are also part of the living beings. Then he asked them why we declined. I said because no American father or mother dreams to make his or her child a scientist. Our situation is a little better. We at least dream that our children should become doctors and engineers. They are even worse. Management is the queen of science for Americans. But what is the queen of science for sociologists? The bad strict situation is that ask any sociology teacher anywhere in the world. They will tell the queen of science in physics or genetics engineering or molecular biology or at least economics. But what was the manifesto of August Kunt who gave the science called sociology, the way we study and teach. He said, he has written five volumes about the philosophy of science. He is the first modern philosopher of science, do you know? The man who gave birth to sociology is regarded as the first modern philosopher of science and there is no dispute. He said the first science, the first modern science is mathematics. The second modern science is astronomy. The third modern science is physics. The fourth modern science is chemistry. And the fifth 
modern science is biology. But he said, these five sciences are good for nothing. They can neither give you power, they can neither give you happiness, they can neither give you contentment. Why? Because all five sciences are fragmented. There is no holistic view about life, society or cosmos. The five existing sciences give five different dimensions of life and society. As a result, we suffer from partial knowledge. And partial knowledge is worse than ignorance. Ignorant persons, uneducated persons are much more happy than those educated persons who have partial knowledge. Therefore, he predicted as a philosopher of science that this situation is not going to conduct as a viable enterprise. In case sciences have to prosper and grow, they must give something to society which finances it. Therefore, integration between the five sciences is necessary. And he visualized, that was his hypothesis, that only a new science can integrate all the five. And that new science was sociology. From that day, and that day was, according to textbook, 1838. But, this is the English history of sociology. In case you read Chronologically, the writings of August Kunt, he started writing in 1822 and he died in 1857. His notes are available today in Equal Polytechnic. He is simultaneously reading all the existing five sciences. In, in trying to integrate the empirical connection, not theoretical one, the empirical connection in different contexts where all the five sciences will enrich human life. I am giving you some names who are directly influenced by Yagas Kunt. Karl Marx, Emile Durkheim, James Stuart Mill, Friedrich Nietzsche, Claude Levi Strauss, Theodore Adorno, Max Horkheimer. Jack Derrida and all their followers. Only one name is excluded, Max Weber. Mm -hmm. 
It doesn't mean he is not influenced, but there are some smart people who will never acknowledge. Sociology of Max Weber is impossible without August Kant and Karl Marx. He is responding to them in here. In Max Weber, there is action, but there is no structure. There is no system, there is no society. Then where the Max Weber's actor is acting? In the air. This is your fourth semester and I have every right to be enlightened by you. Our great sociology says that Protestant ethic promotes capitalistic enterprise. Isn't it? Give me one country's name where Calvinists are the top hundred industrialists from the day Max Weber wrote this fiction to 2017. There is no country on earth where Protestant ethic is directly empirically correlated with entrepreneurship. This is a great fiction like the fiction Indian leaders have been making. But we are in a hurry. We never scrutinize. Therefore, unless and until we are ready to doubt the validity of a particular scientific proposition, we are not going anywhere. For example, never accept any sentence which I utter in this classroom. Interrogate it. Compare it. Contrast it. And after you have done sufficient homework, come in the class and say, Sir, you are stupid. It doesn't work in the empirical context. I am giving you one example. There are three terms in this course which are terribly important. Do not go by the title of one book written by one author. This book gives only a partial view about the complexity involved in the relationship between the three, between the three concepts. And these concepts are magic, religion and science. Now, you must have read or at least heard about it. That there is a book, Magic, Science and Religion, written by Bronisila Malinowski. But this is a much later writing. Sociology as a science while inquiring about these concepts much before even August Kohn's. Don't talk about Marx, Weber, and Durkheim. What is magic? Magic. In Renasa, that is 13th century Italy, was something which was produced by unknown factors. For example, I am not making uh, a political statement, I am giving one example which may be absolutely nonsensical. Therefore, don't argue 
with the example try to understand the theory of magic how magic works for pre modern people or pre scientific people for example there are these are examples i am sorry i am not discussing these concepts i am discussing magic in india there is a person who claims that by note bandi that is by cancelling 500 denomination notes and 1000 denomination notes black money can be eradicated there is another person who claims that by making one additional post of lokpal corruption can can be eliminated there is another person who says that just by giving subsidies to everybody a society of prosperity can be created but there was a similar person in germany who said just by following my policy it germany can be made a super power in the same way there was a russian who said that by following a particular policy russia can be created a greater russia than jar had created in the same way there was a chinese i am not disputing their intention in science there is no place for sentiments intentions science is primarily concerned with a hypothesis and empirical validation and there must be a time span therefore what ma- what was magic for 13th century italians in florence what something like this which we are listening since 8th november 2016 it is quite possible that tomorrow a person claims that a baby can be created in 9 seconds and not 9 months and they will quote mahabharata that draupadi and this jumna were created in one day what i am trying to underline is a simple fact and that fact is the concept of thesis which is not hegelian or marxist this is agast pontian the only thing is that he calls it theological stage he said science undergoes three stages the law of three stages the theological stage the metaphysical stage and the and the positive stage every concept has these three stages what is the theological stage this is the stage of hypothesis this is the stage of thesis what is the metaphysical stage this is the stage of contrary empirical evidences
And what is the positive stage? You compare and contrast the contrary empirical evidences and then come to a working hypothesis. For example, what is magic? For the Protestants, Christians of Europe, the Catholic Mass is magic. What is Mass? It is a liturgical construction of Last Supper in the Bible. What is the meaning of liturgy? Liturgy is a system of rituals, you know. Mass, it is a congregation of the believers. And what is the Last Supper? In the Bible, I will give other examples from other religions as well. What is the Last Supper? In the Bible it is written that when the body of Jesus Christ was departing, he called his chosen disciples and gave them Last Supper. He was the host and his chosen disciples were the guests. But this is not so simple. There are three important Protestant theologians, Martin Luther, Zwingli and Calvin, who differ so much with each other about these concepts, about the operational manifestation of these concepts, that they almost do not share anything in common. As a result, today in 2017, There are about 421 versions of the same phenomena. Most Indians and most Hindus think that Hindus are divided among castes and sects. Christians are homogeneous, you know, monolithic community. Muslims are monolithic community. Nothing like that. Every community, in the Durkhinian sense of the term, is of two types. The orange type and mango type. From outside, mango and orange both are fruits and you know, they present a very unified view. But what is the difference? That the segments of orange are almost similar. That is mechanical solidarity. The mechanical solidarity of Imai Durkheim is like orange. Whereas the organic solidarity of Durkheim is like mango. What is the difference between the two, my dear friends? The difference is that you can give one piece each without a charge of prejudice or, or partiality in the case you are distributing orange. But how just you are, it doesn't matter. Whenever you are dividing the mango, the charge of partiality can be easily labeled and verified. Because ultimately, there will be a good tree. Somebody will get that. 
the useless thing, the non-eatable thing. But this goodly is the most important thing in the world of knowledge. This is called seed which gives birth to a tree which will be giving you millions of mangoes. Therefore, try to imagine the thrill of doing science. When you are a student of science, you are trying to be divine. You are like God or Goddess. I am sorry I do not know the exact gender of God because I have not encountered him or her so far. Therefore, what you should do? Please write an academic diary. Write in love with your own intelligence or ignorance. Don't wait for others to love you. Don't wait for others to respect you. The difference between a person who takes the path of knowledge or science and those who do not follow this path is the difference of human beings and God. What is God? God knows that he or she is God. We do not know that we can be God or Goddess. What does it mean? What is the concept of God in sociology, in the religion? Durkheim says, religion is, religion is symbolic representation of our collective conscience. The limit of God is the limit of a language. Whether this is the language of love or the language of hatred. From Christian point of view, there is a concept of devil. From non-Christian point of view, that devil can be another God. For example, those who are from North India and incidentally born in a Hindu family, so-called Hindu family, you must have celebrated a festival called Makar Sankran. It, it, it is celebrated on 14th of January these days. What is the myth or the belief about Makar Sankranti? The belief is that from the day of Makar Sankranti, sun moves or transits to Uttarayan, North Pole. Now what is the difference between Uttarayan and Dakshinayan according to the Hindu belief system or the Hindu myth? Uttarayan is the day of gods and Dakshinayan is the day of Pitra ancestors. Now the question is, this is the North Indian version of Madhav Sankranti. The South Indian version differs from it. Because the South Indians think that they are the gods. South Indians suffer from superiority complex in India. But this is their view. They do not know that the North Indians also suffer from a superiority complex in another, another way. The only difference is that when a North Indian and a South Indian marries or becomes a friend, they lie to each other. I am giving you one example from sociology of education, although I am not teaching education. There is a person called Basil Bernstein. Basil Bernstein wrote that he was doing a field work in London. 
and uh, he was invited for a lunch. He went there a little early. The hosts were not ready. Therefore, he has started observing and listening to the servants and the drivers and the gardeners. What they think about his host family. And then deliberately, he discussed with the host that your servants, your, your gardeners, your maids have a very high opinion about them. But they did not reciprocate it. They said they are not civilized people. They are poor because they are non-intelligent. You know, they have no culture, something like that. Basil Bernstein writes in his field notes, actually, the dependents or the lower class people, you know, employed in that family had a worse opinion about the masters of the house. But the reason, uh, you, you know, the masters did not know about it was that the servants or the lower class were communicating in elaborate code with themselves, but whenever they interacted with the masters, they were interacting with restricted code. I was doing a field work myself in three towns. Initially, they were not communicating with me. Then I understood what is the problem. I waited for three days. Nobody was, you know, uh, talking to me in elaborate code. They were talking in restricted code. But I had to stay there for almost one month and seven days. It was not going to work. Therefore, what I did, I undressed myself and had another type of dress. Fortunately, I know a little Arabic. I can read the Quran the way it is written. And I have been a student of Islam for many years. And they were, you know, offering namaz. Then very gently, I uh, caught hold of the uh, Mufti and said, Sir, your pronunciation in this Surah is very good, but unfortunately, Al Ghazali said it like this. He said, You know about Islam? I said, Why? No, no, these Hindus are, you know, uh, very malicious about us. I said, I'm not a Hindu. I'm a baptized Buddhist since 1975. I cannot share with you. Their whole discourse changed after that. He thought I'm more minority than the Muslims of India. What does it mean? This is what is called empathy. This is a term made technical and popular in sociological literature by Bronisila Melinowski. You cannot do field work unless and until your respondents have empathy in you, you know, unless and until there is utmost trust, unconditional love. Two people cannot express each other their concepts. Are you getting the point? Therefore, Reading a book is not an easy task. You have to have empathy with a particular author. For example, you may be a very ardent supporter of Talmud Parsons, but I will request you to have empathy when you are reading Theodore Adorno, who is a great critic of Talmud Parsons. This is called bracketing of existence by phenomenologists. 
Are you getting the point? Suspend your judgment for some time when you are trying to inquire the true layered meaning of a particular concept. We will discuss tomorrow. Thank you.